That's money, baby. Thank you guys for tuning in. Back with another Spider Gang interview. And this time we got MK Ultra, aka Green Guy, aka Milkman, aka Meat Man. Yes. Shit, what's happening, bro? Uh, I'm chilling. So, we got a lot to unpack with you, bro. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a shit ton to talk about. <laughs> Fucking, first, I want to know when you got involved with Spider Gang. Around what uh, time? I think, uh, I, well, I started doing shows with Wendigo, Dillinger, and A14. I want to say January of 2020. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was a little bit earlier, but I started doing shows with them. No, I think it might have been earlier. It might have even been in 2019, honestly. Um, I just remember, yeah, uh, time, I, I don't fucking know. But I, I knew I started doing shows with them probably like 2019. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I started really like hanging out with them and like getting to know them. And that was great. And then I ended up coming out to uh, Cali and um, I went to Long Beach for a day and, I, mm-hmm. you know, I met... Uh, Darky, I met all the dudes. I met Corpse and shit for the first time, and I really liked them. And then, like over the, you know, um, it got to a point where we had the 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 New York show. It was like right before COVID. Yeah, it canceled I everything around show. like Feb- February, um, and that was you know that they they asked me to join, like the day before when they came, and at, at first like I I wasn't. I wasn't sure at first because I, I'd never really I was in groups but I always never really felt like I belonged so I was kind mm-hmm. of like iffy about it but when we played the show I was like if I was ever going to be in any group it was going to be this one yeah like I just felt like I belonged I always uh, you know you were saying this in the corpse interview that you never really felt like you belonged I was always in like team sports but I was always a kid that would just like not be like paying attention or yeah. some shit or like I don't know I was always thinking of other shit. shit yeah I was just like or like I never felt like I fit into any sort of group or any mm-hmm. sort of team sport, but this feels like it's a, like a sports team type shit. But like we we all kind of fit in a weird yeah. way because we don't fit, you know what I mean? Because we're all kind of different individuals. So no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So when you, so you started doing shows with them around 2019, how did you get on these shows? Were you already like uh, I was? I mean, I've been doing uh, like underground. I mean, I've been doing music forever. Like I've been mm-hmm. playing guitar for a while, but I started like putting out music on the internet as like. Uh, MK Ultra doing rap, so I've been like um, doing that since maybe like 2015. Okay. So I've been putting out music as like MK Ultra rapping for a while, but it's developed and like you know I've took a lot, some of that old music down, some of it's still up. Um, but yeah, so I I, w- I was kind of doing that for a while. I mean, there's like I was, I was you know back in the day I was supposed to do a project with like Brumain, mm-hmm. but it never happened. But that was in like 2016. Because okay. we actually listened to each other way back b- before we even met each other. So it's like, you know, it's like in this web of like, we were kind of like late SoundCloud, I feel. Like mm-hmm. it was like the transition from like what SoundCloud was in that era to kind of like, you know, how it is now where it's not yeah. really as much of a thing anymore. Or like, yeah. you know I mean? it's not what it was. No, I got you. Okay. Okay. So you we're dropping this MK Ultra. Um, did you... Were you kind of garnering a fan base before you hit Spider Gang? Yeah, I, I mean, I did have a good... Uh, you know, like, I had songs that had, like, a good amount of plays. Um, like, I had, uh, I don't know, I had I had a song that, like, had, like, 100K plays and stuff like that. So, like, I had songs that did, like, really well, but it was mm-hmm. also, like, I would play in the city that I was in, and maybe, like, 10 people would show up. So yeah. I had, like, crazy, a lot of, like, internet shit, but, like, not a lot of, like, real life shit. Mm-hmm. Um, because just, I guess, the scene I was involved... Like or like where I was, the scenes just didn't fuck with the type of shit that I was making. Yeah. So um, making shit that was so out there. Yeah, or just like, yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, I I think that I I kind of had a fan base a while actually when I played the show last night. There were a couple people that came up to me and said they were like listening to me since like 2015, That's which was up. like kind of like mind blowing because you know I, I like. That was when I first started rapping, so mm-hmm. that's kind of why I took a lot of that old music down. But the fact that like people were like, it still meant a lot to them was just like really cool to me. 
You know what I mean? Or like special, I guess. So you started doing shows with Dylan Joanigo stuff in New York. Yeah, yeah. Were you living I'm, in New York? I'm from New Jersey originally. You're from New Jersey, okay? So it wasn't much. It wasn't much for you to go to New York well, and do shows. Where I was at, it was like a 45 minute train ride. So I, I really always loved the city because I could just like go up there mad easily, and I would like go up and I would like chill with them, or I yeah. would do whatever. You know, I don't know, see shows or, or do do whatever. Like what my was, brother's from New York, also. Oh, sure. word. Or he lives in New York now. Yeah. So yeah, so what? Yeah, it definitely wasn't much for you to just go there and just kind of take it all in. Yeah. What was it like, kind of growing up, where you grew up? Um, it was. Uh, I want to say just like very homogeneous. It's very like just like a bubble, mm-hmm. just like kind of the same shit. And it's like you're supposed to act a certain way and you're supposed to behave a certain way. Uh, and uh, you know, I didn't fit in for a while. And I think as a kid, I didn't really like. I kind of just like enjoyed shit. And then I would get ripped on for, like, enjoying certain things. Like, I was the only kid that was, like, into, like, metal yeah. and stuff like that. And I would always wear, like, I would. I remember I always wear, like, an Anthrax t-shirt. So kids started calling me Anthrax because I like that band. But that band's hella good. But, like, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, like, you know, shit, shit like that. I always just, like, kind of just rep the stuff that I was enjoying. But then I would always just kind of, like, you know, it just wasn't, it didn't fit in sort of, like, any sort of narrative. Mm-hmm. Um so I always kind of just felt like outside of shit, I guess. So that's what we were listening to early on, a lot of metal and stuff like that. That's what I started as. Like, I think metal was the thing that got me really excited into music. It started with mm-hmm. my dad because he played a lot of, like, classic rock shit. So that's kind of gotcha. what it started it as, like, a lot of, like, Led Zeppelin and shit like that. And then gradually when I started getting into music that I was discovering myself, it was a lot of, like, I really liked a lot of thrash shit like Metallica and Anthrax and like Slayer Mm -hmm. but then I started getting into like even heavier shit like I like Pig Destroyer and like Grindcore and like really like fucked up crazy shit yeah Uh, and like Cannibal Corpse um but at a certain point I got like a uh I had a guitar teacher shout out Greg Zubowitz from Old Bridge Music uh he like got me he was like in the thrash scene in like the 80s but he also like studied like classical guitar and like Mm -hmm. jazz and he turned me on to like a lot of stuff that like influenced a lot of metal musicians but I didn't know it from that perspective yeah so it's like he, he got me into like playing like funk guitar we had like like a period where I was doing only like blues he would just like teach me like a lot of different genres. how old were you this time were you like teenagers yeah when I was 16 so when I was 16 I started like going with him and like learning guitar lessons gotcha. from him and like that like kind of changed me a lot and okay. like uh how I like see music now was this the, was this the same time you started to kind of like take on rapping uh, I started producing when I was 16. I didn't start rapping till I was like 18. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. And then, so this, you started rapping was around 2016. So you were like 18 around 2016-ish time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, when did, how long were you rapping before you started, before you actually started going to New York and doing shows? Like How, how was long I was rapping? Uh, I think like maybe like three years. So it was like three years, and then you started going to yeah. New York and doing shows. What were you doing before to oh. kind of promote your music and get it out before you started to hit New York and do shows and uh, stuff like that? I mean, that? I was just putting shit out on the internet. I remember one time I bought a repost from Craig Zinn, and it <laughs> went up, uh, like, just at the time. So, like, that's mm-hmm. just what I was doing. And, and like, you know, a, a couple songs, like, caught on, just just happened to. Word. So, you know, I don't know. So, so you were playing, how many instruments can you play overall? Um, I I played cello when I was younger, and I want to get back into it. Um, but I've been playing violin recently. Mm-hmm. Guitar is like my main instrument. I've been playing that since I was like eleven. Uh, I've been playing banjo recently. Oh, okay. But I've been kind of playing it fucked up. It's, I kind of play. I know how to play it the right way with like the finger picking. Yeah. But I like playing it with like a pick and almost like playing it like it's like a sitar, or like because mm-hmm. I like a lot of like um, I like a lot of like Indian music and like music from like uh like islamic music also and shit like that um but um i play that and then i play bass and i do like a lot of hand percussion too and then like i used to play drums for maybe like two or three years but i wasn't that good but i'm trying to start playing again yeah because yeah. flaco was telling me you could play a shit ton of instruments yeah, I, I yeah. <laughs> Fuck, it was like MK could do fucking everything. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, and I've yeah, I think I said I played violin recently, and I like that shit. Yeah. So where'd the name MK Ultra come from? Well, I, I know, but I know about the government thing. Is well, that, that, is that that was when I was like, it was when I was like maybe seventeen, and I remember learning about it in a class um, that actually talked about like some cool shit, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, I was it was at a time where I was starting to do psychedelics, and, like, mm-hmm. psychedelics, I think, like, ultimately became, like, a really 
big influence on me just like in life and yeah. also just creatively I so tell by the music video yeah <laughs> yeah yeah um uh you know they they really like changed my perspective yeah. on a lot of things especially coming from a place that was very like um like this is like the narrative it like completely kind of like shattered a lot of like notions about life and sometimes it like uh i almost didn't know how to deal with it i feel like sometimes i almost took psychedelic i mean i'm not mad that i did it or you mm-hmm. know uh, regretful yeah. because it worked out how it worked out and i am who i am but like i maybe feel like sometimes people take the shit too early before they're ready or like you know there's not like any sort of like there's not like a school for psychedelics yeah. kind of, you know what i mean or like back in the day like psychedelics have always been used with like shamans and shit but there was like a methodology for it so it's like you know you'd have someone that would walk you through it or stuff like that there's not really that so kids will like take psychedelics and they'll put themselves in horrible situations yeah they're just like tools you know what I mean it's how you use it type shit so it's like you know also you feel feel like it opens up another part of your brain I think it's just um yeah I guess so well I I think that's the thing with like shrooms is they say that it like makes a lot more it allows it a lot more connections in your brain so you know um I'd always like 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 kind of like coming up with like writing things down that like I almost like wanted to think about um like always like a week before I did like a really big shrooms trip Mm -hmm. and I would want to see like how it like how it made me think about those things in a completely different way that I wouldn't have thought of like before yeah so like stuff like that or like really cool like thought experiments and shit like that that were like really cool how do you think psychedelics kind of change your perspective on life overall um I don't know, because there are, um, I don't know, I've had a lot of, like, different experiences. Yeah. Um, I guess I could go through one that was, like, the, uh, it was the inspiration for Green Guy. Um, and, uh, so this was when I was, it was during a period, uh, where I was doing, like, a lot of psychedelics. Usually I only do them, like, maybe once every, like, three months. Mm-hmm. Or, no, like, once every, like six months or something like that like I would only do them once in a while and whenever I would do them I would just do a lot and I would kind of make it a special thing I didn't like to like at first I didn't like to do it like like maybe like two grams I didn't like to do it during a party I kind of like like I I don't know I I like to do it for that like that purpose yeah and I remember but there was one period where I was really experimenting and I was doing like DMT I did like I had like six trips and maybe like three months in like the course of a summer and I had one trip where I did like five grams of shrooms um and I was like sitting in my room and uh, I was meditating and all of a sudden I see all this like really crazy surreal like fucked up imagery like it was just like the human anatomy and just like the body and like the meat skin like almost like a diagram Mm -hmm. and it was like a like I was in like a graveyard and there was like a cartoon dog with like teeth for eyes and I was like but it was at a time where I was actually kind of like hella happy or like yeah. I, it wasn't like I go through periods where I'm a lot more anxious or like shit than others type of shit. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, ups and downs. But I didn't think that there was anything that I was like hiding. So it was like, yeah, I was having a bad trip, but I was like, why am I having a bad trip? Yeah. It almost like wasn't like I was almost like frightened by it. I was almost more confused and just like curious. And then I remember I like look up and I see like uh, an alien that's like, it's like a bowling pin <laughs> with <laughs> fucking... Uh, strings, like, like, but the, the strings are floating and the end are just, like, almost, like, eyeballs. Yeah. And shit. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, it, it, it's, like, that's, then I had complete ego death where it started, like, taking apart, like, everything, like, like I ever knew. Like, it, it started making me feel like I would have, like, multiple different emotions at the same time. So I'd be, like, laughing, mm-hmm. but also angry and also scared <laughs> And like crying, like, like four di- like like overload of like different emotions that yeah. like I was just like like tweaking out, like it was hella weird. And then it, all of a sudden it felt like I was like an oblivion, like character creation where it was literally like hacking me and like changing me, but like on like a like on like in my like kind of like core. the creative character. Yeah, like it was like creating game. my character, but it was like <laughs> fucking with me. Um, and then um, and during this I was like I was scared <laughs> shitless. It was terrifying. Like it was, it was really scary. Too. But uh, I then I I sort of had like a realization, and this was like kind of like the turning point in it, where I was like, um, he's not malicious, he's just like fucking with me. Mm-hmm. He's like treating me the way like I treat a piece of art, 
where it's like when I like make a song, like I'll take this part out and I'll like put it over there. You know what I mean? I was like the piece of art in that situation. Like it reminded me of like when I was a kid and my older brother would like, um, he would build all the Lego sets. Like he was the one that would like kind of like read them and like put it together. But then yeah. like he was like old enough, like that like he didn't give a shit so i would like take apart his already built legos and i would like put them back together in really weird and fucked up ways Mm -hmm. and he that's like what he was doing with me so it was almost like (laughs) i don't know it was almost like i see it as like that was like a like a version of like myself Mm -hmm. type of thing but it's like you know kind of like made me almost it was a weird fucked up way of like realizing that like art is kind of life and life is art i guess and that's kind of is that kind of how meat man kind of Meat together. Man is like the opposite of that because that is like Green Guy because it's like, yeah, it was like hella fucking with me, mm-hmm. but it was also it was like destroying me, but it was also creating me because mm-hmm. it was like taking me apart, but it was also putting me back together, and so like that is like Green Guy is he's just like creating, but like Meat Man is just like the inverse of that. Like to me, they're like they're actually just the same character. One's like build, one's like destroy. Type, yeah. yeah, but they're they're to me they're actually like the same character. Like if you listen to the lyrics on Green Guy, mm-hmm. there's a lot of like talk about like destroying like if like like God like destroying like civilizations mm-hmm. and shit like that of like you know like God caused the flood in like you know the fucking Bible because yeah. he didn't like how fucking people were fucking acting but then he got Moses to like bring or no not Moses fucking Noah what I was saying mm-hmm. Noah to like you know repopulate the earth with like Ugh. different species so mm-hmm. it's like wipe shit out and start something new got you and so like that's like kind of what Green Guy is so it's like creation but it's also destruction and then like Meat Man is like d- destruction but that's almost like an art like just dis- destroying stuff almost being mm-hmm. like an art in itself I guess Shit, imagine being Noah and going up to two lions. Like, hey, come on. Yeah, he probably got mauled. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, going up to a rhino. I don't think rhinos hit boats are just things you can walk up to and be like, hey, come on the boat. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> 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 like, that's just a packed ass boat, bro. Yeah, really no, that must have been hella are. fucked up. There must have been shit everywhere. Oh, bro. Uh, that was for 40 everywhere. days and 40 nights. The, was, was the wood was probably just f- full of fucking like piss, like piss, probably and like, just, like animal cum, into the wood, <laughs> animal <laughs> nut everywhere. <laughs> so milkman, how did it, where did milkman come from? Milkman was kind of like it started as like a little pump parody, honestly. Oh really? It's, it, that's what it started as. Well, it started as like the, when like rappers were like memes, mm-hmm. or like it was like that era where you had like Bad Baby, where it was like. um I don't know where it, it was like it was like based around that idea of like meme rap but it was also kind of like influenced by this idea of like using this idea of like memes kind of almost being like propaganda yeah. and being used to manipulate people so like the idea of milkman or like my original thought with it was like a rapper that was like made by the industry to like blatantly manipulate people and to like get them to like do certain things almost like Cause that's like what MK Ultra shit a lot was was it was like mind control and mm-hmm. like using like hypnosis and like certain things to like get people to like think certain thoughts or stuff like that yeah. like um yeah like a lot of like uh like that shit was also like used in like propaganda mm-hmm. type shit or like the modern PR shit like how we know like PR and like marketing kind of came from like almost like influenced by like Freud like how can we get people to buy certain things by like appealing to irrational emotions like I yeah. forget what the guy's name was but there was this um story early on about like um this guy who wanted to see if he could get women to start smoking more so he framed it as like a woman's march and they called it the torches of freedom so it's like all these women marching but they're all like holding cigarettes so it like it frames mm. it as like oh you're like empowered because you're smoking cigarettes yeah. type of thing and it get like it actually worked and he could actually prove that like by like taking this one image or this one idea and putting it in a certain context he could actually get people mm-hmm. to like buy things okay so like that's kind of like the idea of like the milkman is just, just like he's like basically like a propaganda machine. Like he's like a modern rap propaganda machine. Or like that's the idea. Tea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> AKA buy shit. Yes. So okay, so it's kind of like a parody. Just kind of like yeah. yeah, modern rap, SoundCloud rap. 
cliche that, that was how it deal. started, but it's just like, you know, it, it, all this shit, like all, a lot of my shit is just kind of like me making it up as I go. Mm-hmm. And kind of just seeing what happens. Like the yeah. characters evolve over time. Like it's like Meat Man was kind of thing. I had a project that was like in like 2017 or 16, around then. But it was like a character, but it was more like he was supposed to be like a cannibal at first. Mm-hmm. Um, but I ended up evolving it into like something different to like accommodate the green guy thing. But like, so like the characters kind of evolved over time. A lot of my shit is kind of just like making split decisions and then like kind of like going with it and like seeing how it turns out type of okay. shit. Like the green guy thing like was already, I started wearing the green guy suit because I was like, I want to have a character that's an alien. And then I started doing like those like experiences with psychedelics and from there, it, like, evolved into something that actually mm-hmm. took shape. But originally, it was just, like, I'm going to be an alien character. And then it, you know, eventually it evolved and took to something that, like, you know, was a thing. What made you decide to kind of be like, all right, I'm going to have these three characters instead of just releasing everything under MK Ultra? Um, I don't know. I guess I liked... Uh, uh, I don't know, I like a lot of artists, like, one of my favorite artists is, like, David Bowie. Mm-hmm. So I like the idea how he had, like, um, he almost, like, rap or, like, made music from the perspective of certain characters. Like, he had, like, the thin white Duke, and he had, like, you know, um, you know, like, Ziggy Stardust and stuff like that. So his, like, as the character shifted, the music shifted, I just always thought that was, like, an interesting idea. And mm-hmm. at the time when I was starting to do, like, characters or wanted to do it, I started taking, like, acting classes and stuff okay. like that, and I was doing, like, a little bit of like theater shit and so I kind of like the idea of like kind of like working from like something else's like perspective um I guess the idea the original idea was almost to like get out of my own ego about like making music Mm -hmm. and sometimes I still feel like I suffer from that but I like the idea of like almost like not working from my own perspective like it's like influenced by me because it's like my experiences and shit and how I interpret it but like that was like kind of the initial idea yeah Kind of yeah. allows you to expand on sound. You got you're yeah. making it. You're making it from a different perspective or the perspective of this character. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you kind of do different things in like MK Ultra would yeah. per se. Yeah. Okay. So what? So you kind of would you say you kind of view it more as like uh like performance art? Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. And you, yeah. Well, like that. I was I was getting into like a little bit of that like around the time that I was like starting to. Um, do this shit mm. like uh one of the things i did was this shit called like buto which w- really like influenced like meat man like you ever see the movie the grudge yeah so like buto is like this japanese uh form of like uh theater where they paint themselves completely white and they like it's like hyper controlled movements but a lot of times they're like almost like portraying spirits or like they're like you one of the exercises you had to do was like you almost had to pretend like you're dying and there's like bugs crawling out of your like eyes and shit mm-hmm. like that and you're like decomposing and like the the kid in the grudge that's like doing all that like crazy shit like that was like a buto performance or that like that was like influenced by like that shit um so like i had experience where i had to do that and like one of the like one of the um things that we had to do our exercises was it was almost pretend you're like a puppet so like the person who's like controlling you will say like move your finger like this Like, Mm -hmm. as if you're, like, controlled by strings or, like, move your arm. And so, like, the idea is to, like, be completely in control but also, like, lose control. Like, you have to be hyper hyper aware of, like, your body. Like, they would say, like, move your eyes or, like, twitch your eyebrow or, like, you know, like, you have to be aware of your, like, face or your whole body. And so, like, that's kind of, like, what I like doing with, like, Meat Man and shit and, like, sometimes, like, contorting my body in, like, really weird ways and, like, I don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Well, shit. Fucking, we'll wrap up part one right here and jump right into part two. So, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, hit the website, kotakasicofficial.com. Make sure you cop some merch, uh, all that shit. Check out Instagram, Uh Subscribe to the YouTube. Listen to this on Spotify and Apple Podcasts if you aren't already. And, yeah, all that shit. Part two coming up right now. But, shit, we're back. Part two. MK Ultra, Spider Gang. Spider Gang. Aliens. Do you think, you think, bro, you think they're here? I I've think been so. thinking about aliens a lot now. Well, because like, there's, I mean, there's the shit like there's like news articles and shit about UFOs, and they're, I think I forget when it is, but there's some day where they're supposed to, um, like release 
actual footage so that it's like public. Yeah, Trump says something like, "Hey, in this day, you guys have to release." But you know how you know that you know yeah. how that is. They never release everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They no, say they did, but no, they didn't. Of course. But um, but yeah. it's like it's at the point where they can't even deny it. At this yeah, point. like all the UFO videos came through, and the government's like, "Yeah, bro, like, <laughs> like I mean, we can't even act like these are military jets anymore." Yeah, we don't we don't know what the fuck this shit is. And this shit's like a hundred to a thousand years more technologically advanced than what we have. Yeah, no, nah, it's kind of like mind blowing. I mean, I don't know. I feel like I've always, I mean, I've always kind of like been into aliens, like yeah. since I was like a little kid. Like, uh, but I don't know. I always kind of like felt like that that's like there's definitely like something out there or there's definitely it's like I don't know there's definitely stuff that is like way more intelligent than us that we can't fucking comprehend it's like do you think yeah. like it, it's like thinking about like if an ant like knows that we exist <laughs> yeah it's like that uh, probably not definitely. probably not like a pr- ant probably like can't like even fucking I don't think comprehend. they can see they, they just feel out yeah exactly so, so they, they can probably comprehend. can't even comprehend it and it's yeah. probably the same way with us with like some other shit that's why, because I was talking to my boy about this. It's like, what if, you know how people have ant farms? Yeah. Like, what if that's us? Like, what if we're just <laughs> like a science project or some shit? You know what I mean? Sometimes I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what yeah. if we're some alien kid's little science project? Yeah. And we're really just in like an ant farm the size of this thing. It's like the whole world. Yeah. And it's like, oh, watch them all fight each other over this this fucking black liquid yeah. substance that comes up from the ground. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Let's see what these motherfuckers are going to do. <laughs> oh, they invented this thing called music. It's wonderful. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Bro, this show is so fucking <laughs> right? funny. We're like a TV show or some bullshit. Like, what, what shit? Was that like a There was a South Park episode Yeah it was a South Park episode You seem like you watched A lot of fucking South Park South Park was my favorite show Bro that's one of my favorite shows South Park I binged (laughs) When I was like Probably too young To watch it And I hella watched Like every episode Bro I've seen I was definitely watching South Park But I was way too young To be watching South Park Yeah but like I feel like that was something That like even though Like I didn't probably Get all the jokes I think as I went As I kind of went back to it I feel like uh, I got a lot more out of it And I feel like There were like a lot of Episodes that were like about like specific topics that were like to that time, mm-hmm. so it's like a really good time capsule. But like also that episode to me is like hella like crazy and like existential and like fucked up because yeah. it's like yeah that's like <laughs> I don't know I kind of feel that sometimes. Yeah. Also, Yo, <laughs> it could really be like that. We just have no fucking idea. We would bro. We, we we can't no. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's like some shit that's like completely outside of just like what we could fucking comprehend mm-hmm. or see. I think it's like I think it's completely like I don't know. You can't deny it at this point. No way we're the only ones here. The yeah, universe no. is way too expansive. Think about like when we were kids, like would they teach us there were like yeah. eight or nine planets or whatever? Yeah. And now look how many fucking they've discovered yeah, since yeah. then. Like there's there's so many more planets and like I don't know, we're like our galaxy's like moving at a yeah. certain like millions of light years a minute towards another galaxy and they're gonna collide and shit yeah. and everything's gonna <laughs> blow up when it fuck it's wild there's no way we're the only like life here well I feel like also like if there are aliens that are like that advanced it's probably like they're not even like in this dimension they're probably not like in 3D like um there's one story called Flatland have you ever heard of it it's, it's basically this idea of like imagine there's like a two dimensional world where it's like only like flat circles and like squares and shit and they're all like they're all just like going they're doing their own thing and then one day a three dimensional creature like comes over and like it kind of comes through their world they would only see like a sliver of what that actually was mm-hmm. they wouldn't be able to comprehend it or if like there was like a, a like a three dimensional creature that just like yelled their name they would have no way of like understanding it because it's like completely outside of their frame of reference for yeah. what reality is mm-hmm. so like uh you know that what if they're like fourth dimensional creatures or fifth dimensional creatures that already existing here that we just can't comprehend because we're in the dimension that we're in that we can understand things in the way that we do you know there's also like the idea of like there's the frequency frequency spectrum of like what we could actually like see and hear Mm -hmm. and that there's so many others frequencies that like we just can't even pick up on because we've we've developed this over time because you know we had to survive you You know what i mean yeah, we've almost blocked everything out that wasn't useful for survival. Definitely. Do you think that has something to do with like afterlife too? Because like I've been thinking a lot like what happens after like death, like death. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like there's evidence that you're alive for a certain amount of time after yeah. your body is dead. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're you're aware that you're dead, and it's also like you know how like 
you know, we were just talking here with Court, say living in the apartment and shit. Like yeah. the energy in that apartment, they said was real negative at times. Yeah. Like that, you can feel energy when something's off. Like if you sat down yeah. right here and we started talking, like, and you were in a terrible mood or I was in a terrible mood and just didn't want to fucking be here, yeah. you could you could probably tell without me even fucking telling you. You, yeah, you yeah. just sense my energy's off, yeah, or yeah, vice versa. You know what yeah. I mean? So that shit always makes me like wonder. What happens after like the lights, the lights, you know, <laughs> switch off? Yeah, no, I I do kind of like I don't know. I wonder about that too, but like I, you know, I don't know. Sometimes I, sometimes I I think about it and I think I have an idea, and then other times I'm like, you know, maybe I have an experience that like completely shatters what I thought was like right. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like especially with like times I've done psychedelics, it's like I kind of like do it and it like. It kind of like breaks me open, and then maybe I over time I get set into a certain idea of things, and then maybe I have more experiences that either like confirm that or like go against that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like I don't know. I've had a lot like a lot of different like ideas about like death, like over time. Like I don't know. Sometimes I think uh, that like you know this is just an idea that like maybe consciousness doesn't come from the brain. That maybe it's almost like uh, a radio. Mm -hmm. So it's like a radio that's just receiving a signal, but it's not actually coming from inside the brain. It's coming from some other place. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or it's just like, yeah. And so that it, that idea would support it, you know, theoretically. Like if the brain goes, then consciousness still, still exists somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But, you know. That's true because, like, when they consider, when they, when they pronounce you dead, like... What what's the criteria for being dead? Is it brain dead? Yeah. But it's it's like your brain still has activity there. So it's like is what you're saying is weird. Cause that's where the brain is technically dead. There's still some activities that kind of yeah. like that's exactly what's got me going. Like yeah, damn. Well, I feel like scientists don't really like we don't really know like that much about consciousness. We could look at like brain activity and we could mm -hmm. look at oh we push this one thing. You know, th this we introduce this chemical, then this happens, but it's like correlation doesn't always equal like causation, you yeah, know, yeah. type of thing. So it's like, do we really, do we really like understand like consciousness, like at all of like what this shit actually is? What, mm -hmm. what does it mean to like experience something? Like being like physically like right here, right now. Yeah, or like like anytime you like, have you ever done VR? No, what's that? V virtual reality. Oh, reality. okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking Sorry. about, like, a drug. No, <laughs> like, no, no, no. what is that? As no, 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 but, like, <laughs> I don't know. There are times I've done VR where it's, like, even though it's the technology's not there yet, it's, like, there is one game I played where I fucking, like, uh, it, it, it makes you feel like you're on the top of a building and you have to, like, jump off the building. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's just the game. It's just, like, a short thing. But even just, like like looking at that it's actually like terrifying yeah because it like it really like actually like puts you there or i don't know it, it, there's something about like there's certain games or like when you fall it actually feels the motion of it yeah even though you like there's a part of you that could tell you're standing still it's like weird how that like kind of fucks it's with so your easy to trick your eyes and your brain yeah into thinking something's actually happening yeah but then, like, you know, how do you, how can you be, that's one of those things that, like, how can you really be sure any of this is, like, actually happening? Or, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, real, we're not a TV show. Or, it's you know what I mean? Simulation. Or, you know, like, what is, what does it mean to, like, I don't know, be, like, conscious anyway? Or, like, you know, that's, I kind of believe in the simulation sometimes. Yeah. But, like, I, I kind of think that. You kind of, th you think, do you think this even has any fucking meaning? I'm kind of here like That's why I, that's I think you create your own meeting I think yeah. that's what I'm I think you kind of like Yeah I think I think you kind of Create your own meaning I think like reality Is kind of just like Subjective mm -hmm. I guess You know what I mean It, it, it is all I, 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 I think so I mean it, You know I'm still like You know I'm still like Growing up I guess And like learning more stuff About the world Because I want to see the world A lot more And shit But like I sometimes kind of think that That it's like Your perspective Kind of shapes your reality you yeah. know like you could kind of see things from like two different sides and that's kind of why i like the green guy meat man thing how they're like the same character because it's like they're both like one person but it's like how you view that person from like a different perspective gotcha you know what i mean i don't know yeah well shit fucking where do you see yourself in the next few years like where do you see yourself in spider gang going well let me ask you this question the same question i asked corpse because you guys are all gonna <laughs> answer this in your own way where do you feel like spider gang fits right now and like where do you feel like you fit in like the puzzle of spider gang 
Uh, well, Spider Gang in like general, just like in the music landscape, I think that like there's been. I feel like we're like the first like post genre group. Mm-hmm. Like I think like we get seen as like, like a lot that. of rap like group, which like we are like because we're heavily rooted in that. But even like you know like Corpse does a lot of melodic shit or stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or like you know like Dillinger had like guitar songs on his album and like blues songs and stuff like that. You know, th- it's not like one thing or like you know. Darky will have like rap music which is like rap but with like rockabilly and shit like that like mm-hmm. I like that idea that like we all just like love music and that it's not about like any one genre I guess I feel like that's been a thing that has been um, like over the course of the years like it's been kind of coming for a long time this idea of like post genre music like I think like Prince was like an example of that because he was hella into like funk and like R&B but he was also heavily into like rock music and playing like guitar solos on a shit. Yeah. So that was at a time where like music was like heavily divided by the radio where it's like oh you have the funk stations and then you have the rock stations and you have the disco stations and they're really geared to like appeal to certain people. Like genres are almost like a marketing mm-hmm. a way of like marketing music essentially. I feel like what we do is kind of like break that down a lot of times. Yeah. And I think that is, like, something that, like, I also want to continue to do more, I guess, in my own shit. But also, like, producing as well. But, like, you know, just, like, kind of make shit that can't really be classified. Because I just listen to a lot of different types of music. Because I just like music. I just, like, I like discovering new shit a lot of times, too. Like, sometimes I'll just, like, I've been getting back into, like, the radio, honestly. And sometimes just, like, playing random stations and I'll leave it on for a song. And just, like, even if it's something that, like, I might not, like, immediately fuck with just to, mm-hmm. like, just to, like, expose myself to something that I probably wouldn't normally listen to. Like, yeah. like hella, like, Mexican music. Like, there's hella crazy <laughs> like, Mexican music, the station where like I'm mariachi at. mariachi music. Yeah, it's hella shit. actually, like, Hey, mira- mariachi music is actually lit. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's like, actually lit hella fuck. good. I love mariachi instrumentals. Yeah. yeah. No, there's, yeah. I, I don't know. I just, like, discovering new shit and, like, finding shit that I probably wouldn't normally listen to or like you know I don't know there's this fucking Miriachi band I forget what the fuck they're called it's gonna bother me but I have the album saved in my Spotify if you find it <laughs> this and they fucking <laughs> what they, they do covers of like Nintendo songs cause I'm a big I'm a big video yeah, gamer I, I, yeah. a huge video I was gamer. a Nintendo fan bro too. my game room uh, is extensive yeah like I have every Nintendo system I'm a huge Zelda fan Zelda's my favorite game of all time yeah fucking <laughs> Huge Zelda head, but they cover all Nintendo music. It's That's like in Miriachi so style. That's so lit. And I love, it. I love it. I love the album. I love everything about it. Like, and they only did this one album, and it was like fucking seven years ago. And I'm like, damn. Yeah. This is lit. It's just one of those things I found in like the corner of the internet. Yeah. I love finding just little gems like that. Yeah. Like you know, like no one knows about this. This yeah. is fucking great. That's why, I like, I don't know. Occasionally, I like like vinyl and like. um Recently, I got a cassette player so I could, like, mm-hmm. fucking record shit onto cassette. Like, I could use it for music and, like, put it back so it gets, like, a tape effect. But I also got it because um, I was at Amoeba because when we were in L.A. And I got, like, a few, like, tapes that were just, like, some random shit that, like, uh, there was this one, like, it was, like, a Russian, like, it was, like, Russian music. But it was just, like, hella crazy. I kind of want to sample it when I get back <laughs> and I get I get home. Um but yeah, no, I just like I like finding shit. That's why I like vinyl and sometimes cuz it's like there's a lot of times when like people buy vinyl and they kind of just like buy like Gooba by 69 cuz they made a vinyl release of it or something. Yeah. But like there's like I feel like and but those albums are like 40 bucks. So yeah. it's like it's retarded. Like you could buy like there's some like vinyl where like you could go in the box it's like $5 and you could find a record that like probably isn't even on the internet that just like exists as just, like, a piece of physical media. They probably, like, made... They only made, like, 300 copies, and they're selling it for, like, five bucks. So Mm -hmm. you can't really get it anywhere else. And it's just, like... It's just, like... I don't know. Sometimes that's, like, cool to listen to. Music is... Music is so interesting now, especially now in the way, like... You can find it, consume it, because it's, yeah. like, you can, like, I found that this, this Nintendo Miriachi thing in, yeah. like, the corner of Reddit, and yeah. I'm like, this is fucking great. Or you can go and, like, dig dig through yeah. tapes yeah. and find some shit that's from Russia that yeah. they didn't make, that, like, no one heard. Yeah. yeah. It's not even on the internet. Yeah. It's, like, this, it's, there's so many ways to consume music now. It's fucking beautiful. Well, and I love the way you described, um post genre yeah. because like the last generation the sound the end of the soundcloud era i was kind of feeling like 
you know, members only and X and everything, I was kind of feeling, all right, this generation, this era we're in now, it's kind of like they listen to everything and everything's yeah. kind of coming together. Now we're kind of moved beyond that to where it's like, what is a genre? Now yeah, we yeah. had everything. Everyone's making everything. Now it's like, <laughs> yeah. fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, how do we describe this? <laughs> well, yeah, 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 yeah. No, and I think that, like, and I think that X and members only, I think they were a huge step. Like, when I first started, started following X, you know, it was really crazy because it would, like, he would put out, like, a song like King. That was like, or like, mm -hmm. a, you know, like a rock song. I had a yeah. crazy breakdown, but then he'd also put out like, you know, like all these different style. Like every song he put out was completely different, and like, um, I think they were like, early into that, and I feel like they're kind of like leading into like, I feel like what we do now, and I feel like this could only exist in this era because of the way information technology has like changed that we can like. We can discover anything. Like everything is kind of like at our fingertips. Like we've never. Like I feel like this is like. It's so weird because like there is kind of like a lot of like I think bullshit and like a lot of like industry shit that's kind of just like shoved down our throats. You know yeah. what I mean? That's just like you know what I mean. But it's all marketing and yeah, stuff like it, that. But there, but there's like still like it's such a crazy era because of like how much shit you can discover. Because it's like, yeah, it's like if you don't fuck with like Olivia Rodrigo. You could like listen to like some shit from like the '60s yeah. or like the '70s, or you could listen to like this corner of like SoundCloud type shit, or you could listen to like Space Ghost Perp. You know what I mean? Like you could listen to like anything you really want to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Parks started to get wild. They're having fun. Yeah, they're having a great time. This is a, this is a great background. Spider Gang is for the kids. Spider Gang is for the children. It's for the children. I love how, I love how we're a, it's just we're just in like a natural setting. Like people are just doing their own shit. It's kind of cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Life is just kind of like happening around yeah. us. It's kind of dope. <laughs> we're just like having this deep conversation about like drugs and music. <laughs> it kind of I don't know. It's kind of cool. Fucking. But shit, man. Fucking um. Is there anything else you want to add? I'm trying to think. I don't know any questions I got. Shit, we went pretty deep. What do you What do you think? Um, no, no, don't shit, I don't even know, bro. You think humans are gonna end up on Mars? <laughs> that's, a good, probably, that's a good way to get into. Probably, but I think it's probably gonna be fucked up. I, hope, I, hope. I think I think it's gonna be fucked up, and I think it's just gonna be like some hell of like wealth disparity. Yeah, I'm not going to fucking Mars. Bro. I feel like the first people that are going to Mars is gonna fucking suck. Like it's just gonna because it's like you're you're building all this infrastructure. I feel like people might be cramped. Like imagine living on a place where there's like no air except for like yeah. artificial air. It'd be like living in Walmart all the and time. And then and then if you just lose that artificial air, you're, you're like fucked. fucked. Like imagine if like that, like I could see like some accidents happening. From, oh like, hella accidents happening. I'm not going to no fucking Mars. I'm